does any of this come as a surprise to anyone? Obviously, we as a nation have not entertained a shared system of values for many years, decades. Uh, the speaker, having done some research, has found himself locked at a point of view of seeing all sides of things. Well then, one might say one has made oneself irrelevant. Such types as I, presently making myself might in errors past, have been the conscientious objectors, the prophets of nonviolent resistance even. We could all merely lock hands and take to the streets in silent protest. We could all lay our differences aside and demand a little transparency on the part of these institutions may clear our willingness to dismantle this entire edifice, or rather that portion of it that remains, which merely seems to suit the super-rich, it would be an easy thing to do. In fact, it's already been attempted. For certainly the vast majority of our participants in this present protest have been yearning for just that. It's been examined through the lens of a particularly gruesome manifestation of it, and that was the killing of a man who did not deserve to die and begged out for mercy before our eyes while being suffocated, apparently quite deliberately, by an officer of the law. It is not inappropriate that such an incident, when witnessed by millions, should serve as a, such a catalyst. It is horrific what we find when we turn over the rock of this society, for surely we do see men who have been made to behave as worms. We did cover it up with a rock, after all. Uh, with regards to law enforcement, many of us merely feel encroached upon in our civil liberties. Many of us are simply not fond of the hostile and invasive attitudes of many of these officers. The worst among them have often been seen by many of us as being inclined toward needless aggression. And we witness the interaction of these perhaps unstable personalities with perhaps some other unstable types who happen to be unarmed civilians. The training is described as being lackluster in many police departments around the country and we shouldn't be surprised at what unfolds. And it bespeaks many dark things, it bespeaks an underbelly. Let it serve rightly as a symbol. Uh, what concerns me with these protests is the apparent violent and riotous nature of some of them, which does not appear to be the will of the majority in many instances, but rather seems to be the result of the infiltration of some manner of armed groups with a political agenda. The nature of this agenda has not been articulated clearly enough by any combination of sources for me to state conclu conclusively what it is. It is sometimes called Marxism, Communism, Leftism, Modernism, Postmodernism, Internationalism, etc. And yet I do feel convinced that there is something peculiar peculiarly reminiscent in the present goings-on with what took place in the Soviet Union in the 1920s and in China in the 1960s. My suspicion is aroused enough to make me feel obligated to say something. A study of history simply confirms that we shall know them by their fruits. That is, however utopian this or that ideology leading to revolution appears to be in the present, its consequences in time seem without exception to be destructive. You see, I could list examples, but it's a powder keg. I will be dropping down into the gutter of somebody else's unresolved ideological battles if I did that. Why would anyone do that? Uh, I'd like especially to get through to some of the progressives here. I hope that you understand that our media conglomerates are in the hands of a very small number of very rich people. And that the version of progressivism so many of them espouse does not appear to sincerely embrace the brotherhood of man, as it claims. Rather, it seems to use the politics of identity to divide and conquer. 
I do not need to speak of Mr. Soros here. An intelligent observer can do their own research into the personage of Mr. Soros and determine the extent of his influence and whether his intentions are nefarious. I hope you understand, progressives, the bold-faced hypocrisy of some of our politicians affiliated with the Democratic Party who appear in many instances to have supported the mass gathering of individuals while simultaneously enforcing a lockdown. I hope you understand, progressives, that there is a reasonable body of evidence that some amount of organized and monetized child trafficking appears to go on among some of our very so-called elites and that this is a subject peculiarly underreported on or even dismissed on the part of those media outlets that appear to be affiliated with the left or with the Democratic Party, your CNNs, MSNBCs. That's a peculiar thing, ain't it? Uh, it's no mere trifle when a man as well-connected as Mr. Epstein is revealed to be a trafficker of children. And it is not something to be overlooked when some of our news outlets proclaiming themselves defenders of democracy, guardians of truth, and warfares for justice should turn a blind eye to such a thing. And does this not bespeak an underbelly as well? A man guilty of no greater crime than the usage of a counterfeit $20 bill does not get slowly suffocated in the broad daylight by those who claim to protect and serve us. Not in our America, and yet we see it before our eyes, and we can only wonder who or what has taken hold of this world we're living in. Neither does a man enslave and sodomize children in exchange for great wealth and influence and be sheltered by our legal institutions for some apparent matter of decades. Not in our America. Yet we see it before our eyes and we can only wonder who or what has taken hold of this world we're living in. And yet of the people, one half are made aware of this wanton slaughter of civilians on apparent mere account of their race. And cognitive of the, cognizant of the historical legacy of racism in the United States are incited to raise arms against the other half. Fascists, they might call them, Trumpists. That other half being made aware of the sexual trafficking of children on an unconscionable scale and cognizant of the contradictions in the mainstream narrative are incited to raise arms against those they might call cultural Marxists, anarcho-communists, globalists, etc., and yet in either party, the intentions of the people are moralistic, perhaps infused with a righteous indignation, and yet in so many instances, the powers that be would seem to have worked to pit brother against brother by merely exposing some of the outrages of the world to the one and some of the outrages of the world to the other. It's the same old principle of divide and conquer all over again. And yet the spirit of the people seems to be of one mind. When questioned, they would like to lessen the suffering of themselves, their loved ones, communities, and if possible, the whole of humankind while promoting the freedom, equal opportunity, health, and well-being of said. We are the children of light who simply seek to do good, though often we allow our insecurities and resentments to get in our way. We should not like to be ruled by those who would deceive. I'm taking baby steps here myself. I realize at last that my intentions for the rest of humankind are ultimately good, though I do harbor my own insecurities and resentments. And I often find that practically all people are loving and charitable in return when love and charity is extended to them. Uh... Our institutions simply do not credit humankind with this quality, even though it is rather empirically observed. Rather, our institutions seem to think of us as some higher manifestation of a domesticated animal. I don't know how else to put it. 
Let it be heard once more that we have observed our institutions engaging in cr criminal activities time and again and have made sporadic efforts at change with various movements that became cheapened in the gutter of this left-right polarization, which basically has amounted to us pointing fingers at ourselves while they keep getting away with it. And there are always three fingers pointing at oneself wherever one is pointed outward, so they say. Now, if we were to discover that there were some infiltration of normalized child trafficking into these institutions as well, then I don't know how else to put it than they are, that they are under the spell of some other idol. And excuse me if my religious language comes off pompous to some, it's just how else can you verbalize such a thing sufficiently to express its magnitude? And for another thing, well, it's not entirely clear to me as a concerned citizen that some amount of religious ritual does not go on among these elite. Uh, I might have laughed at somebody like Alex Jones a mere few months ago. And indeed, I do find some of the conspiratorializing he does to be quite ludicrous. However, I now give the man the credit he deserves for having had the guts to sneak into the Bohem <clears throat> Bohemian Grove in 2000 and film that bizarre cremation of care. Quite a comical spectacle, it seemed. This video did not produce any evidence of true satanic rituals, sacrifices, and all that. And the whole thing had the aura of some very old Disney World ride. In fact, I suspect the cremation of care spectacle probably goes back as far as the first day of the 20th century, judging by the language used and the seemingly antiquated nature of the equipment, that was just my observation though, and of course the video quality was not great. What struck me was the actual content of the ritual, that is the words and their meaning. It seems as if these people are literally vowing to harden in their hearts, cremate care as it were. Uh, a very unpromising spectacle on behalf of some of the movers and shakers in this country. You shall know them by their fruit, to lose our jobs, to be evicted, to be made enemies of one another by identification with some group in the midst of it all. This all seems to be the manipulation of that serpent of old, and whenever his game is played, he winds up having all the money. And half of us stand on the right and the other on the left. Women's Liberation some self-proclaimed defenders of tradition and others of progress. And whose tradition is it? The women should be locked in a plastic prison of fetishized commodities while their husbands smoke cigars and corrals, cheat on them all but openly. And whose progress is it that both parties' incomes should be reduced relative to the ever-increasing cost of living? Sporting all types of argumentation over the matter of money within the family and reducing time spent raising the children. Where tradition is espoused by the worshippers of money, it is not our tradition. And where progress is espoused by the worshippers of money, it is not our progress. You shall know them by their fruits, false flags they appear. It was neither true tradition that was conserved, nor was it true progress that was instituted. There, I gave you an example. His tricks are always the same and he's not even too good. He doesn't even give us the respect of trying very hard at his deceit that's not in his nature. He just wants to laugh at us and gloat about how he keeps getting away with it. Here's this thing called scapegoating. Much maligned in the present day, and yet we desperately seek scapegoats, all of us. Why? Well, something quite horrendous is happening, and it's not all my doing. Such is the mentality of the scapegoater, and I cannot refute it since I must confess I find myself engaging in it daily. There is only one scapegoat, and yes, he is oft depicted as a goat. Personally, I don't like to know too much about him. I'll say something when he becomes manifest, which is what I believe I'm seeing now. 
Perhaps he was there ever since he tempted Eve in the garden. Perhaps he resurfaces during certain epochs in human history. Some would have it that he resurfaced in Europe in the institution of Freemasonry. Let's take a look at what the Federal Reserve is doing at the present moment. And no, I do not accuse this institution of any conscious nefarious in intentions. Uh, and yet I see that it is simply flooding the stocks and bonds with trillions of dollars of liquidity at the present moment. A seemingly criminal effort to artificially inflate the markets while working people lose their jobs. This is simply criminal activity. Again, we are most of us debtors and sub severely so. Uh, yet the Federal Reserve pumps trillions of dollars into the markets of Wall Street. But they must say prayers to some other god, which is not that of light, who engage in such seemingly nefarious behavior in the public sphere. And without exception, it reveals itself to be the god of money. Their god is laughing at them as they don't know his true identity. And he gets to have their souls for eternity. I'm afraid that's the only way I can look at it right now. And I am a sinner. And yet I feel that I should always seek to correct my ways. And I think many of us are like that. It seems to be an unfortunate reality that those who worship the god of money don't look at things that way. And they seem to always be the ones calling the shots. I believe this is something of what is meant when theologians refer to the evil one being the ruler of the world. Why? He's simply the god of money. Some call him Baal, Baphomet, Lucifer, Satan. Call him what you want. I hope. Hope I'm not overstepping myself saying that. It certainly seems that way. That is, it seems that those whose highest values are the accumulation of money seem to say prayers, consciously or otherwise, to some other god. Or perhaps he is the god of power. But there he goes again. Do you see how he just played a trick on my own brain? He had me second-guess the equivalence of money and power as if they are some opposing entities, as our media and politicians would seem to want us to believe. Don't believe a word of it. For there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And they were come to the place, one on the right hand, the other on the left, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, Save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? 